Hey guys, welcome back to BGC Dreams. For today's vlog, I actually want to share with you all my worst international shipping experience so far living in the Philippines. So it's been kind of a long, complicated, and very frustrating process. Right now we're waiting for a grab to get started, but if you want to learn more about my experience, please stick around. All right, so where do we begin? First off, up to now, most of my purchases made internationally have been using Amazon. I have to say I've only had a positive experience so far because with Amazon right now, at least if you're living in BGC, they will deliver directly to your door and they'll use a local courier. So that's either through LBC, DHL, or UPS. Uh, usually that's what they use. So no problems there again. This time around, I tried to get a little fancy and cute. I ordered a uh, microphone from B&H Photo, which is based in New York. And they said they had international shipping to the Philippines. It was about $14 that I paid. But it turns out that they didn't use uh, the aforementioned courier services. Instead, they relied on uh, DHL Saver, which somewhere in Germany over to uh, the Philippines in transit, um, when the package arrived, they actually switched to the uh, Phil Post service which is like the equivalent to the uh, US Postal Service in the States. So going the route of Phil Post, I actually found out that the package arrived in the Philippines around uh, the end of October, but they actually didn't alert me until pretty much the beginning of December. So it kind of sat in uh, the post office for over a month, which was kind of surprising because I was actually expecting the package to be delivered to my doorstep. Long story short, I actually found out that there's no way for the uh, post office to deliver it to your door. And you can't even hire a, uh, you know, external company like Lala Move to pick up the package and bring it over to you. The post office actually requires you to go there physically and to um, pay a fee to clear the customs. With Amazon, they kind of take care of all the charges in advance, so there's no additional hidden cost or anything like that. But in this case, if you go through the uh, post office, you actually have to go there physically and then you have to pay like a handling fee. And uh, I guess we'll find out today if there's any other additional fees to clear customs. For context for all this, it really, um, the main difference is it takes a lot of uh, time out of your schedule because you actually have to go to the post office. And if you don't have your own car, for example, you have to arrange for a public transpo, which is what we're doing today. Yeah, so this whole process is kind of funny since we did publish some vlogs about our Amazon experience and people were saying and asking questions if they had to actually go to the post office to pick up their package. When I first read those comments, I was actually very confused because I didn't even know that was such a thing because at least in the States, the post office uh, via USPS will actually deliver directly to your door. Turns out in the Philippines, I guess it's customary for the post office to just hold your packages and you have to physically go there uh, to retrieve it yourself. And just for some more context, the uh, Taguig post office is not in BGC. So although BGC is technically a part of Taguig City, um, you actually have to leave Fort Bonifacio um, and go a little bit further. I think it's about like six kilometers to get to the post office. Your experience may vary, but just from our own, I'm, you know, we tried everything we could to reach Phil Post. We actually like did Google searches to try to find their contact number. We called like a million different ones. And it really doesn't matter which branch you call, they don't pick up or the phone number is not even in service anymore. I think even if you call the uh, like Tagig directory line and you're looking to reach the post office, they really can't help you because there's like really no direct working number right now. Yeah, so FYI, if you are wondering, these are the actual physical like postcards that you will get from Phil Post. And you know, even though the package arrived in late October, I didn't get this until December. So it just goes to show how inefficient their whole process is and their system. So if you're not like really paying attention too much and you don't even have a working address to receive physical delivery, you might not really even know like the, the latest status on your package. Cause if you do the online tracker, like it would only tell me that the package arrived in the Philippines, but there's no updates after that. So even on the website, it doesn't tell you directly that you need to go pick up your package, which again, just adds to the confusion of this whole process.
So in some ways, this experience is like during the pandemic when they wouldn't let you use the SM or a satellite offices to pay property tax. And if you were living in BGC, you would have to go out to Vista Mall, which is also in Tagig, and you had to pay like in their parking lot. So this, in a way, just kind of reminds me of that experience. Now, the thing is, they actually have a post office in Aura. They have a branch there, right? But the thing is, your package is in another branch, and they can't even, like, transfer it. Do you know where the BGC post office is? Uh, I don't think there is a BGC post office, but there is one in uh, Market Market and SM Aura. Made it to the post office in about 20 minutes and let's go. <laughs> So far, so good. I mean, there wasn't really much of a line. He just took the, uh, the postcard that I gave him okay. and he just told me to sit down. We're off to a good start. It's so cool to let us film here too. I know, right? <laughs> a few moments later. OMG, can you believe I actually got the package after like two months of waiting. So that actually wasn't too bad at all. I don't think it took more than 10 minutes. Uh, so I guess it's good to come here on a weekday. There's definitely less people. And they got to it really fast. I think the only thing was the uh, handling or processing fee for customs. It was uh, 112 pesos. But then he gave me like four pesos back too. So I, I don't know. I, I tried to give exact, but I got changed back. So I think it's like 108. And they didn't even have to open up the box or anything. So yeah, all in all, not too bad. I think the only real painful thing again is if you're like, if you have a busy schedule, you actually have to come here to uh, physically receive the package since there's no way to book a transpo company to kind of pick it up and deliver it to you. They actually need your like physical presence. I brought like three forms of ID, even though I don't think they really check too hard for it. You just kind of have to sign some things. Again, it, you know, this whole process is not ideal, but it's good to know that if you actually find a way to get to the post office, it's not too painful at all to actually pick up your package. So that was a good experience. But again, for anyone who's uh, looking into international shipping, I would highly advise you against going with anything that offers a, a savers. Like I went with DHL saver. So what actually happens is when the package arrives to the Philippines, they don't actually use DHL. Uh, it actually gets rerouted to the post office and they won't deliver the package. So how would Phil Post compare to the U.S. Postal Service back home? I'd say for one thing, the scale here is much smaller. You can kind of see right behind me, the post office is very small. There's not many workers, but I guess the good thing is not too many people really depend on it. At least it doesn't look like the lines are too bad. Whereas in the U.S. Postal Service, um, each branch is usually pretty enormous and there's like a ton of uh, lines and uh, customers. I guess the last point I would make is I would still prefer to go with a company like Amazon. Not only do they offer free shipping if you spend $49 or more, but the fact that they'll deliver it to your door and there's no additional fees. Here with Phil Post, uh, when I went the route of ordering through B&H Photo, I had to pay $14 for DHL Saver, but keep in mind there's an additional like 108 to 112 pesos for the handling fee that I just paid. And I also had to supply my own transport. So the grab right here was about 305 pesos. So let's say less than $6, but now we have to find a way back home. So you could say in total, that's like 12 to $13 on top of the $14. This is another reason why we're a strong proponent of Amazon. If you know, you need to go with an international company and delivery service. Yeah, and since we're like in the middle of Tagig somewhere now, I don't know, it almost makes for a good walking tour episode, right? <laughs> walking tour? You did not tell me that we're gonna walk. So now Jenny and I are just gonna wander around aimlessly in the heart of Tagig and we're gonna look for lunch. So thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of BGC Dreams. We really hope you enjoyed the content and found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel below. So I got my package now and it's time for lunch.